David, it looks like there was also a question about um, the best way to go about asking people for inter, inter, inter interpretation. Yes, yes, I always get that question. So, uh, so part of it, uh, I, I, I want to recognize how you might be feeling. You're thinking uh, here on this 24 year old Fulbrighter just coming back, and you know who's going to talk to me, kind of a thing. That's not true. People will talk to you. And so, how do I reach out to an organization? So, the first thing to recognize is that it may be that people know people in an organization. So you've already built a network. This is what LinkedIn is for. You've already know people that you've gotten to know, even if you know them not really well, now is the time to get to know them better. So reaching out to them through LinkedIn or at email. They may recommend to you, hey, why don't you have coffee with my friend such and such, coffee's virtual coffee now, I realize, and talk to them and they do an introduction for you. So what I do with a lot of my students, my students will come to me and say, uh, you know, David, I want to get a job at, uh, you know, this, this non-governmental organization. I say, I think I know somebody that works there. So I introduce that person to that organization and then it happens, right? Now, that's not going to happen every case. Sometimes you just want to go work at a place or look at this, or, you know, nobody there. So you should still reach out to them and you go about it in a couple of ways. One is you first have to recognize that their time is limited and valuable. And the tone of the email that you send always recognize, recognize an email is actually best. The, the line, the subject line has got to be very, uh, uh, it's got to be something that they're going to want to open. So for instance, if, if I introduce you to somebody and there's a connection, my name needs to be in that subject line, friend of David Smith's, right? Because then they'll open it. Now, if you don't know anybody, then you've got to say something like, 15 minutes for an informational interview. In other words, you've got to be as specific as, as to what they want. So they're saying, oh, they're only asking for 15 minutes. Then in the email, you've got to be very short and sweet about what you're asking for. An informational interview is not asking for a job. It's asking for two things. One is what they do and their experiences and the organization. And it's often best to pose the questions in the email or some of the ideas of the questions. So dear Mr. Smith, I heard that you do humanitarian work. I'm interested in that. Could I have 15 minutes of your time to ask you about how you got into the field? What are the best humanitarian organizations to work for? And um, you know, what should I be doing right now to find work? Thank you very much. Get back to me when you can. I email like that, I'm gonna get back to you. One is you're, you're asking me very specific questions, right? And you're only asking for 15 minutes of my time. In the interview itself, when you're talking to them, because it's going to be this way, you need also to be focusing then on those questions. You don't want to sneak in, oh, by the way, or any, any work there. They will tell you. If they're that 15 minutes, they're impressed with you, they may say, hmm, now I'm thinking, why don't you look for this job or that job? If they don't, doesn't mean they're not impressed with you, it just that means no job. The most important thing that you can get out of an information interview is other people to talk to. So at the end of that informational interview, when you're asking the questions, can you say, Mr. Smith, is there anybody else that you would suggest I could talk to? I will send you to somebody else. I absolutely will. It's, I'm almost have a pride in that, that I will say, you know, there's somebody else I need you to talk to. And that person actually may be somebody that could hire you, right? So first of all, recognize, the last thing I want to say about it is that from my vantage point, I'm of a certain age that I want to talk to people of your age, if you're in your 20s and I'm in my 60s, because I'm not gonna do what I'm doing forever. I wanna bring you into the field. I wanna mentor you. You're not competing with me. The future of what I do is in your hands. So it's really in my interest to help you along and to bring you in and to answer your questions. And I think at least in the professional communities that I work with, that's what I see. I see people that think that way and they want to lend a hand when they can, especially at this time. Yeah, so hopefully that answers it maybe a little bit more.